This is the 14th in a series of lectures on exterior differential systems. In this lecture, we want to explain the, the, the final proof of the cartan kahler theorem, the last steps. In the previous lecture, we split the cartan kahler theorem into two parts. The first part allowed us to produce uh, a, a, an integral manifold of one higher dimension out of, a, out of a given integral manifold under some conditions. The second part showed that we could uh, build a sequence of restraining manifolds that would enable us to step by step generate uh, integral manifolds uh, at higher and higher dimension by using the first part of the cartan kahler theorem. So we split it into two parts. Part one showed us that we could inductively, that, was that we could generate an, a one higher dimensional in integral manifold. Part two showed us that we could construct restraining manifolds as needed to be able to build this uh, sequence of, of integral manifolds. And we showed the, the second part of the cartan kahler theorem was true, um, but uh, only, only assuming the first part so we now need to prove that first part of the cartan kahler theorem. And here's what it said. The cartan kahler theorem part one, as we explained it in the last lecture, said that if you had an exterior differential system and a non-characteristic integral manifold x, and x had locally maximal rank polar equations in every tangent space, uh, then x is a hyperservice in integral manifold. So we could make an integral manifold of one higher dimension. And also that integral manifold is locally unique. And we explained in detail at some point what locally unique means. So um, any two such will agree near x. So that gives us a, a very powerful theorem that enables us to stretch integral manifolds up one dimension at a time under some mild conditions. So we need to, to show that this theorem is true. Um, we should first note that, uh, that if, if it's uh, it's true locally, then it's true globally. And that's because of the local uniqueness property that we had for integral manifolds. If you could construct local uh, integral manifolds, uh, any two on an overlap would have to agree, at least near this uh, capital X. So uh, they'd have to therefore glue together, at least locally, to produce an integral manifold. Uh, a larger integral manifold. So, we, so if we could locally do this, we could do it globally by patching together local solutions, since they have to match up uh, where they where they um, where they overlap at least near x. So it's enough to prove the result locally. Each point in our initial data integral manifold x, our p minus one dimensional integral manifold, has a tangent plane. Let's call it E p minus one which is non-characteristic, so sits in a unique integral manifold, EP. So there's a unique way to extend it to one higher dimension. EP is unique, and that implies that the last character vanishes. Why is that? Because the last character is counting how many more polar equations you get when you get to EP than you already had at EP minus 1. But EP minus 1 already had enough polar equations that the only way to solve them all was to, was to use EP. It's the only place you can go to solve all the polar equations of EP minus 1. If EP itself had more polar equations, then their solutions would only occur on something even smaller than EP. And that's not possible, because EP satisfies its own polar equations. So therefore, there can't be any more polar equations at the next step. That is to say, SP has to be 0. OK, so we've got at least that far. Now we know something about the characters. Now what we want to know is how do we actually uh, construct this thing in PDEs? So we saw that uh, this exterior differential system I, which is, is, is in, we can check in this situation, is an involution. Um, it's going to have to uh, be uh, satisfied on, on some, some u as functions of x uh, being an integral manifold, if and only if it satisfies this, this u as functions of x, it satisfies this system of PDEs. And we found that we could successively solve that system step by step, but we weren't sure when we solved uh, it one step and then another step, whether we continue to, to solve the first step. In other words, we found that when we did, when we, when we solve for, you say, u0 and u1 as functions of x0 and x1, then we could solve for u0, u1, u2 as functions of x0, x1, x2, but was u0 still solving the system in for, for, for u0, for derivatives of u0? So we found there was a compatibility problem. Now let's just solve 
the last equations in the in the xp the equations in the xp variable. We'll worry only about those equations. So um, we've got to worry about trying to construct the uh, solution of this system, and we know that's going to exist um, by kozhik karlovsky theorem. Let's call the solution graph xp. What we need to show is that xp is an integral manifold of the whole system, not just of those equations, but of all the other ones. So let's figure out where these equations come from in differential forms. We want to look at those equations and see how they arise. In other words, which differential forms have we forced to vanish on this xp, this graph, and which haven't we? We can write this equation as a p-form equation. We can write it as the equation 0 equals theta wedge omega j. If we take any theta in our tableau, so we imagine we have a tableau for exterior differential system, and, um, and we wedge up with various omegas, omega 1, omega 2, and so on, possibly all the way up to omega p minus 1. We wedge up this theta as, as much as needed so that when, when we've done this, it'll push a polar uh, from whatever grade it was in for theta all the way up to being in grade p minus 1. So again, sp is 0, so there's no polar in the last grade, in the p grade. All the polars are in the lower grades, p up to p minus 1. So we've only got polars up to grade p minus 1, but there might be some polars at, say, p minus 2 or p minus 3. If necessary, take them and wedge them up, wedge up those, those uh, thetas in our tableau until they reach grade p minus 1. Now we've wedged everything up all the way so that it becomes every all of the polars are sitting in p minus 1. We've got all those polars sitting in p minus 1. Okay, so that's where our polars uh, sit, and when you do that, you find out that you get uh, the equation that you get uh, is an equation, the P PDE that emerges in the coordinates is an equation of this form. It only involves the variable xp, and that's because you haven't wedged with omega p, so you've still got the freedom to figure out what, uh, what is imposed on uh, p derivatives, on derivatives uh, in xp. Okay, so the each, each uh, equation, this equation here, when you expand it out, because there's no omega p in there, there's no omega p in here, it will, um, it will actually expand it to have a non-trivial contribution in the derivatives in xp. Okay, so we'll get these, these equations this way, and all the equations that arise this way arise from, uh, all the equations that, have, that are in xp all arise by doing this, by such a wedging process. So now we need to show that uh, the entire exterior differential system vanishes on this, on this uh, graph xp. So xp, remember, is the graph of the solution of those equations, those equations we had in the previous slide. When we solve all the equations in the variable xp, we get an object, uh, capital XP. Um, and that's supposed to be an integral manifold. We want to prove that that happens. So we had to prove that the, the exterior differential system is zero on xp. We have the vanishing of certain forms from the exterior differential system. We've made vanish everything uh, of this form. Everything that, that, that is some grade, maybe lower than or equal to p minus 1, wedged up as needed with as many omegas to force it into grade p minus 1. So we've got all these things that, that have all these polars all shifted up into grade p minus 1, and those expressions are the ones that now that we know vanish on, on, on xp. We don't know that the other ones vanish. What are the other ones? What are the other things that live in the exterior differential systems? So one thing we know is that xp is constructed as a function, as a graph of a function. It's the graph of a function u of the variables x1 to p. So the omega i's are a co-framing. Remember, the omega i's are, for us, just the dx i's. It's, it's OK to imagine that they're just the dx i's. That works fine for our theory. So, uh, so those omegas are just the dx i's. And to say that omegas uh, are a co-framing, in other words, that they, that they form a basis for each cotangent space, that's just saying that x1 to xp are, are variables, uh, coordinates on this xp. And it is true because this is the graph. A capital XP is the graph of u as a function of x1 to xp. So x1 to xp can vary arbitrarily on, on, on this guy. And then the u variables are given by uh, functions of the x variables. So that is a co-framing. Now, what are the p forms that live in this exterior differential system? We want to show that it's equal to 0 on xp. We want to show i is 0 on xp. What's in i? Let's look at the p forms that live in i. 
and we really need to worry only about getting the p-forms to vanish because of p-dimensional manifold. So we have to kill off all those p-forms. What do they look like? Well, they're all the things that we have in the tableau wedged up appropriately. We've already killed off all, everything that looks like this as long as it doesn't have an omega p in it. Here we killed off everything that doesn't have an omega p in it. So if you have, an, if, if you have something left over, it's got to have omega p in it. So the remaining differential forms on of I on capital XP are these forms which have at least some omega p component in them, wedged into them. And, uh, so they're all divisible by omega p. So in other words, all of the p forms that we have to deal with are divisible by, uh, by omega p. And what we have to do is to get rid of them. Okay? We have to show somehow that they all vanish. So what we have is an exterior differential system I on XP, on capital XP. Right? We're not going to worry about our manifold M anymore. We're going to work only on the manifold uh, XP, capital XP. And on that, we've made sure that all the p-forms that don't have omega p in them vanish. So all the p-forms are p minus 1 forms wedged with omega p. That's how we can see uh, this, this working out from our tableau. Our tableau had these various p minus 1 forms and maybe some, some, some you know, theta wedge, some omegas wedge, some omegas wedge, some omegas. But there's at least one omega p factor. And so all the p forms uh, that arise in our exterior differential system on the manifold capital XP are divisible by omega p. So write out our tableau. And we can assume it consists only of p minus 1 forms. We really only need to deal with p minus 1 forms, so we'll assume all those uh, elements of our tableau are p minus 1 forms. So those p minus 1 forms, when you wedge with anything, any one form, you get a p form in the exterior differential system. So we have this p form in our exterior differential system, and by our hypothesis that the p forms are divisible by omega p, this p form is divisible by omega p. Similarly, if we take a p minus 1 form, theta a, we take its exterior derivative, d theta a, then it's a p form. And all the p forms, all the p forms in the exterior differential system are divisible by omega p. So this p form is divisible by omega p. So it must be possible to write these p forms here as some multiples of these uh, divisible p forms. So somehow that's, that's possible to write. We expand that out in coordinates. We expand these two uh, systems of equations in coordinates. And we get a linear system in uh, the in derivatives. And I won't do that, of course, it's again it's an exercise for you in the lecture notes. It's given as an exercise and the complete solution is in the back. Um, so you can see how to expand this out in coordinates and see what you get. You should expand it out and find that you get a linear system for the coefficients, or at least for certain of the coefficients of these, these theta a's. Uh, for uh, that, that, that solves for their derivatives in the xp direction. That linear system then uh, turns out to have initial data given by the fact that these things all vanish on xp equals 0 because xp equals 0 is exactly the, uh, the integral manifold we start with. We start with an integral manifold, capital xp minus 1. It's given in this coordinates by setting one of the coordinates to 0, the last one of the coordinates to 0. And so, uh, so this uh, make sure that when you restrict to that guy, all these things vanish. So that gives you some initial data um, for this linear system. When you have an initial uh, data that's vanishing, a linear system uh, that turns out to be a cauchy kovalevsky form, um, then uh, by cauchy kovalevsky theorem, it just has zero as the only solution. You get, a, you get existence and uniqueness of solution, and that solution is zero because you have initial data being zero. Um, and you have a linear system, zero is a solution, it must be the unique solution, and so we must have that all the thetas vanish all the way across this capital XP. So that finally gives us the result, the cartan kahler theorem. Um, we've showed that uh, if we have a, 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 an initial uh, data hypersurface, uh, additional data uh, manifold X, uh, it's, it's non-characteristic, um, and uh, then we can, and it has locally maximal rank polar equations, then we can um, use this, this Kozhikovlevska computation to show that uh, it, it has a unique uh, extension to an integral manifold of the next dimension. 
Uh, the advantage over the Cartan Killer theorem, once again, that we st that we stated in the very first lecture, is that this works for sort of global initial data. We can make the capital X p minus one that we start with be an arbitrary integral submanifold. So it doesn't have to be uh, some little tiny piece of of, of submanifold in some coordinate charts. It can be some global object, but we only get a local extension uh, of fattening up to the next highest dimension. Um, so next time we'll talk about Cauchy characteristics and about unused variables, how we can reduce vari the numbers of variables in an exterior differential system.